Are mining gadgets a scam? Are you wasting money on mining gadgets? 319 introduced a new modifier to mining gadgets called the cluster modifier. It determines how likely minerals will stick together after a rock fractures. And the Optimax has the best cluster modifier. But does it actually work? How does it cluster minerals? I've used the Optimax numerous times and I always questioned whether I'm wasting my money. After all, it's the most expensive gadget in the game. Well, the only way to find out is to experiment. To do this, we gotta fracture some rocks. I head out to an asteroid field. I looked for a pair of rocks that have similar mass and similar composition of minerals, but they don't have to be from the same cluster. Rock A will be the control rock where there will be no gadget attached. But if I have to, I will attach the severe gadget, which has no cluster modifier. Rock B will have the Optimax attached. I will fracture both of these rocks and scan the mineral compositions of these fragments to see if the Optimax actually does what it claims. Sounds simple, right? Well, not really. At first, I didn't notice this. But one of the new properties added to minerals in 319 is cluster factor, which I'm assuming affects how clustered these minerals are. So since the minerals matter, I have to find an asteroid field with the least variety of minerals, and that happens to be Arc L3 and Kuril 5, both of which spawn only one tier 3 mineral. This will also help with the consistency of mass in these rocks. But even with this, I have to fracture a metric fuck ton of rocks just to find these similar pairs. So with my first pair, this was after I fractured a rock. The two fragments had similar compositions, but their mass was a bit different. Regardless, I thought this would be a good first start to the experiment. So I attached the Optimax to a heavier fragment, headed back to my ship, and started frac- With my actual first pair, this was also after I fractured a massive gold rock. I had two near identical fragments, which was perfect. Rock A would be the one on the left, and Rock B would be the one on the right. I attached the Optimax to Rock B and started fracturing. After fracturing both rocks, I analyzed the fragments, and here are the compositions of both A and B fragments. Now before I tell you, I want you to guess in the comments which set of high charts belong to Rock B, aka the Optimax Rock. I'll give you a few more seconds. No cheating! Have you made your guess? Alright then, if you guessed the bottom, congratulations! You are completely wrong! It's the top. Other than the fact that Rock B had one less fragment, a brief look at those graphs and it seemed like the Optimax had no effect. Rock A had a fragment that was almost pure gold. So I tried again with another two near identical fragments and it turns out not only is there one less fragment, but the Optimax actually makes the compositions worse. Instead of clustering individual minerals together, it seems to be clustering all minerals together into bigger fragments, diluting the good stuff. So the Optimax is actually making these fragments worse so I don't recommend using it in this case. But what about the rocks themselves? Asteroids will always fracture into 6 pieces regardless of the size or mass of the rock. I don't know if this also applies to service deposits, so let me know if it does. So here I have two similar asteroids. Not as identical as the fragments, but it'll do. Now before I show you the results, if you like this kind of content, hit that like button, subscribe and ring that bell so you don't miss out on more videos like this. Here are the compositions of the fragments. Now the effect is more obvious. Just look at this fragment here. It's nearly half the asteroid and it's pure copper. Here are the rock stats for the second pair of rocks and here's the composition of the fragments of both of those rocks. It's not uncommon to have four pure fragments when fracturing these rocks with tier 2 minerals even without an Optimax. Now which one is rock B? Even though it's less obvious, Rock B fragments have slightly better compositions than Rock A. Okay, so the Optimax works for asteroids and deposits, but we've only seen it on barrel. How does it look on tier 1 minerals? Well, this is where it gets complicated. Here's the composition of the Bexlite fragments, and again, it seemed like the Optimax had an effect. Now here's the composition from the gold rocks. It seems like the Optimax worked again. We got some nice clustering here, except it didn't. It did the opposite. I swear I didn't use the Optimax on Rock A. It was probably just really good RNG. But for the Optimax to do the exact opposite on Rock B is very perplexing. I don't know if it's just the gadget behaving differently on Gold, or if it's just bad luck. But I have to find one more pair to be more confident. And here are the compositions from the last similar pairs. As you can see, the clustering looks a lot better compared to the previous pair, but when you compare them to each other, it doesn't seem like the Optimax made a substantial improvement, although that could be down to the differences between those rocks. So yes, it seems like the Optimax works. 
but not in all cases. They don't work as well on fragments, but they do work on rocks. But it's not guaranteed, it only increases the chances of getting better clusters. Whether or not that is worth the money is up to you. If you made this far into the video, thank you so much for watching. It took a long time for me to make this video, so I really appreciate it if you hit that like button, subscribe and ring that bell. Especially because I'm planning on making more mining videos, one of which is the best way to make a lot of money mining, which this video has given me a lot of insights on. In the meantime, if you want to know more about mining in Star Citizen, I highly recommend you watch this video right here.